Welcome back to the Hang Gliding Files. Hey, uh, today we're going to explain why we even have this channel and what we're trying to do with the Hang Gliding Files. Really, it's just two dudes. It's just me and Don. Uh, I'm known as Blue X Dragon. I'm a software developer. I've got 40 years of hang gliding experience. I'm a private pilot uh, with a GA license in sailplanes. And Don, who goes by Seagull, is a CAD engineer. He also has 40 years of hang gliding uh, experience, and that includes uh, being an instructor, flying competitions, and a lifelong passion for the sport. He also flies sailplanes. Well, we should start with really what is hang gliding really? Well, what it is is it's any kind of aviation that is foot launched. So any vehicle of any type that you can foot launch, foot land. That's a hang glider. Uh, it's done by individuals in usually remote places on top of hilltops and bridges all over the planet. And uh, it's usually done at high altitudes and uh, rarely seen by the general public. The other thing is, is hang gliding is uh, an exploration of micrometeorology. You are flying in very small areas of meteorology with changing winds and clouds and and weather all around you and it's not you're not really all that worried about the general overall view of the meteorological world you're interested in what's happening on your hill and uh, that's very important and as part of that you need scenery uh, good scenery because the scenery gives you clues as to what is happening in the unseen world of the wind around you And so something that is really basic or or like a game Has no value in a hang gliding simulator Because the ultimate purpose is to try and go cross-country and to do that you need to have a whole set of skills and the, a whole lot of real realism in your world to make that accomplish to make that happen and last is uh, there's always a little bit of social context in hang gliding because you're doing it with your friends and doing things that nobody else does and it's great to share that with somebody. Well this brings us to uh, hang gliders and flight simulators. Well, first off, hang gliding does not need to be gamified to be fun, it just has to be realistic. But historically, all of the simulations of hang gliding have been basically ridiculous either a simplified uh, two-dimensional game with really bad graphics or uh, something that uses unrealistic characters or equipment that uh, have no real relation to hang gliding at all. Sometimes it's just somebody building a personal project that doesn't have the uh, goals and, of being a real simulator at all. And some of them are just uh, simulations of hang glider adjacent activities like paragliding or other things and not really hang gliding either. But with today's modern hardware and software that we have access to, we get uh, systems that have photogrammetry and photorealistic representations of the entire planet Earth. And we can go to these places and experience them either on uh, regular flat panel uh, display, computer displays or all the way up to VR. So we're going to explore that as we go through this process. So where we started with is uh, we tried to see if we could create some hang gliding in a, an existing flight simulator and we used uh, Arcside Flight Simulator uh, Steam Edition which is from about 2004. And we tried to see if we put enough effort into it, could we possibly make it seem like we were hang gliding. And the reason that we used this particular simulator was at the time is that's all our computers could run. And it was the only thing that we could find that even had something remotely similar to a hang glider in it that we could eat, uh, then test and try. And uh, so to make it work, um, yeah, it had a model of a glider in it, and we could get some photorealistic uh, scenery, which 
It was way better than the standard scenery. Um, but we had to add uh, thermals and cloud development um, so that there was something in which we could soar in. Uh, the instruments that are provided with uh, the simple gliders is nothing more than a variometer and an altimeter. And so we added on to that some uh, third-party software, which would allow us to have flight instruments that were running on our phones. Um, we needed to add the ability that you could actually launch the gliders because they, in their native format, as soon as you s started the, the sim and you were in the glider, it just started moving. So you had to be positioned exactly on the launch and exactly ready to go in exactly the right conditions because the glider was just going to take off as soon as you spawned into the, into the system and now it's completely unrealistic and very frustrating. And last we wanted to have the ability to do some multiplayer so that we could uh, play with more than one person. And we think we were successful and that's what our original videos were all about. Well, then we came across the, another uh, simulator that uh, we didn't know about until we started this project, and that's called TFAV, the Free Flight Experience. And it's a um, complete VR, 3D hang gliding uh, video platform. And um, it's got proper flight controls. It uses um, the VR hand, co hand controllers as uh, movement for the glider. It uh, has built-in weather controls and weather history. It's uh, a 100% VR platform and uh, built uh, using Unreal Engine by uh, Thomas Slow. And we'll put the links below to, so you can see uh, for yourself what kind of uh, uh, system he's got here. And it's uh, unique. It's the only one in existence of uh, somebody who's doing realistic, photorealistic hang gliding. And we also found another uh, flight simulator that uh, really piqued our interest, and that was uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. And when we first uh, got a look at that, we knew it was a game changer. Uh, it is just really unbelievable. It has the ability to render the entire planet Earth in full 3D uh, rendering with photogrammetry and uh, AI-generated uh, trees and bushes and uh, three-dimensional houses and uh, people, cars, volumetric clouds. Um, it's just outstanding. Uh, its ability to render a realistic environment in which aircraft can fly. Um, it also has excellent uh, VR capabilities. You can also fly in real-world weather if it's uh, raining in the real world where you're going to fly and you go there in the simulator, it's raining in the simulator and that is really just spectacular. Supports multiplayer. Uh, the only things that would, had an issue with it is is that it had no natively supported thermals or ability to soar and it had no natively supported gliders. There was no aircraft in which you could attempt to uh, do soaring flight. Um, but the other things that it had were intriguing so we're going, we were going to take a look at it. There are other uh, simulators that are exist, um, but all of them had too many deficiencies or too much work, too much effort to try and use them, and so they just simply weren't worth it. Okay, let's talk about what's not in these simulators. And the first one and the main major thing is weather. So weather needs to be uh, have proper cloud life cycles where clouds build, dissipate, change over time, overdevelop, um, blue skies, whatever, but it can't be the same all the time and using weather presets is just not going to simulate that. And as part of that you need proper uh, thermal development behavior. Thermals need to develop in a natural, uh, realistic way, basically where's the sun shining, where's the shadows, what's, hot, what's heating faster, what's the, what's the lapse rate, what's the humidity, what's the cloud base, what's uh, all the different factors that uh, make up how a thermal develops and how they rise, they bend with the wind, 
They disconnect themselves from the ground. They move over distance. They pulse over time. Um, that needs to be simulated properly. And the, th and the thermals have to be connected to the cloud development. Clouds are developed because, especially cumulus clouds, because of thermal development. And we need to be able to always be able to fly in real weather because that's where you get your dynamic uh, modifications. It's endless in the variations that real weather can create. And as part of that, we need to be able to capture real weather or, and then replay that real weather over time so that people from different locations and different time zones can play together and experience the same weather um, that is based off of real weather. And it should be noted that uh, Microsoft is going to have a uh, update that should address all of these issues uh, come November 11th. A variation of uh, weather is turbulence and that is really involving uh, dynamic wind changes, that uh, wind changes over time, that it uh, has different flavors to it like shears and rotors and gusts, and the way that those wind changes affect a, a hang glider usually typically more than what they would in other aircraft. Well next up and obviously is, is hang gliders. We need to have uh, realistic models with realistic flight dynamics. And also we have to have all types of hang gliders represented from uh, trainers all the way to high performance rigid wings. Uh, also these uh, gliders need to have proper animations which is how the pilot moves and how the glider moves uh, when it's flying. Hang gliders sails move quite a bit. They change shape when they're flying and uh, that needs to be animated. Also that needs to be addressed is uh, instrumentation. Hang gliders don't use the same instruments that uh, uh, regular airplanes do. They're the same basic instrument but they're in a different form uh, and, it, and its most basic form is a variometer and an altimeter and that's enough to get you uh, flying but uh, to do any serious flying you need a, a flight computer as well which is a GPS system that keeps track of where you are, where you're going, uh, can keep track of tasks and other types of things and also can record your flight for um, replay later so you can see what you actually did. And then there's the way that they're attached to the gliders and there's a zillion different ways that um, the instruments can be uh, attached either to the base bar or across the heart of the down tube and uh, different um, connectors and uh, fairings and different things so uh, we'd like to support all that as well. Uh, the next major thing missing from all simulations is uh, uh, the ability to simulate ground handling. Uh, that's the, just the ability to move about on the ground, which is the equivalent of taxiing an airplane. Uh, you need to be able to move, uh, and when a hang glider moves, it moves differently on the ground than uh, other aircraft. The glider actually, uh, when it's off the ground, it reacts to the air. It, it flies. So we need to be able to simulate that as a means to uh, control the wing while it's on the ground. And then there's the ability to choose a proper launch by uh, being able to uh, observe wind cycles, thermal cycles, choose the steepness of the launch, the, what's uh, in front of you on the launch, other kinds of obstructions, wind variations, and then the ultimate decision about when to launch it, that's up to the pilot, and that's all part of ground handling. And also part of that would be the ability to hook in and hook out of the glider and uh, basically enter and exit the aircraft. And uh, last but not least is the ability to uh, fly from real hang gliding sites. And to do that, you need to be able to find these sites to fly. You need to be able to locate it in the simulator and go there. You need to be able to create your own site or share a site with others. And this will be a uh, big community thing, I think. And it's a very integral to all right, well that brings us to what's next for the hang gliding clouds, what we're going to do uh, in the next coming days, months, year. Uh, first off, we're going to build some sites. We already have a whole bunch of site data and a whole big giant site database. You can find that on our website, um, link right below. Um, but we need to build some software for Microsoft Flight Simulator that allows us to integrate that site information into the simulator. 
In addition to that, we need to build some um, realistic gliders that will be usable within Microsoft Flight Simulator, and that's underway. We've got some progress on that. And of course, we'll be making videos every week. Uh, what we do is make adventure videos, um, which is really just two guys going out trying to do a task and seeing how it turns out. And until we have hang gliders uh, available to us, this is, it'll be sailplanes and other types of things in Microsoft Flight Simulator as we work through uh, the details of how to make that flight simulator work the way we want it to. All right, well, uh, that's uh, why we're doing what we're doing. Uh, if you like what we're trying to do and what we're trying to accomplish, uh, I want to like and subscribe and follow along as we uh, give you updates and show you how this um, adventure turns out. Uh, if you know anybody or, or want to help or you need help in doing what we're doing, uh, give us a, a link below or a comment and we'll get back to you and we'll give you all the information that we have. All right, well, we hope to see you out there uh, on the site flying. Uh, see you again next week.